From a 12 hour standoff to a shootout, a man police say targeted his estranged girlfriend turned up dead inside a luxurious West Side estate. CBS 2's Randy Page is live at Pacific Palisades as detectives put the pieces together in this case. Randy. And a very slow, painstaking process, Pat. This yellow crime scene tape is still up. That means people who live up in this very expensive neighborhood still not allowed to bring their cars in, and we're waiting for the coroner to arrive in this officer-involved shooting investigation. Police say it began as an argument between a woman who lives in the neighborhood and her boyfriend who pulled out a gun and started shooting at her around 11 last night. She got away and flagged down security guards who called police, and the standoff began. At one point, police say the boyfriend, who appeared drunk and was shouting obscenities at them over the phone, started shooting at police and they returned fire. Then police fired tear gas into the $18 million home, which is 9,000 square feet with six bedrooms and six bathrooms. When police didn't get a response, they kept firing more tear gas into the house. People who live in this neighborhood didn't know what to think. Disbelief. Disbelief. I was like, I, I scared, very scared. Like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to hide? You know? Police evacuated some neighbors, and those who didn't want to leave were taught how to shelter in place. Marianne Lord and her husband huddled inside their home and waited for it to be over. I guess you never know what, what, what happens in life, you know? You know, we, we seem to just be a quiet neighborhood, and, and um, the fact that we were woken up while we thought were gunshots was, was really frightening, you know? So you, you never know. And the body of the man believed to be this woman's boyfriend was found on the second floor. It appears he died from a gunshot wound. At this point, Force Investigation Division officers are trying to figure out exactly what happened here. Again, still waiting for the coroner. It will be up to the coroner to decide the exact cause of death and also to help determine whether or not this person died from a self-inflicted wound or from one of the police officer's bullets. But it is also worth noting, police say they were able to talk to him at about 6 o'clock this morning, and that was after the last amount of bullets were fired back and forth. So it appears it is extremely likely that this could have been a self-inflicted wound. The identity of this man as well as the victim, the woman in this case, has not been released. Let's go back to you.